We're all here on this fire scene today to talk about the collection and preservation of DNA evidence. Now, when I started in the business 25 years ago, we didn't concern ourselves with DNA evidence. But with the advances in forensics and crime scenes, it can be a very valuable part of our cases. What type of things, Judy, would we look for on a fire scene that might be useful as far as DNA collection? Well, Dan, through the course of people's day, they naturally slough off skin cells. Hair may fall out. Blood is left when we're cut. Saliva when we drink from a cup or smoke a cigarette. And semen through sexual activity. So we know these things survive a regular crime scene, but do they survive fires? Yes, they can under certain conditions. DNA evidence is invisible, so we need to really look at and concentrate this on the substrates that may contain those DNA deposits. That's right, and I guess as a fire investigator, we need to step out of the origin and cause box and start looking at the fire scenes more comprehensively. Exactly. There's four ways, Dan, that we can look at a crime scene for DNA evidence. We can use visual examination, we can use an alternate light source, chemical sprays, or stereo microscopy, which we would do back in the lab. All right, well, first let's talk about visual observations. As a fire investigator, I would walk into a place and try to find out where did the person enter or exit the building or the room? Can we collect DNA from that? Was there a struggle? Is there DNA that can be con collected from a struggle? Or maybe the vantage point where someone set the fire or where they watched it from a distance. Is there anything there that we can collect? These are the things that as fire investigators, we need to start looking for on fire scenes such as this.